We're LMS UK, my name is Josh Robinson and we're here with the very talented Stuart Lawrence. Stuart, I'm here to ask you a few questions and get to know you a little bit better. Is Great. that okay? Yeah, absolutely. First question I'd like to know is, where does your musical influence come from? Um, we've seen some songs here today. I'd love to know wh who you're listening to that's influenced that music. Well, I have to be, uh, admit that I'm, I'm really naughty. I don't actually listen to anybody else's music. <laughs> um, well, I, I used to, obviously. Um, and I still got all my old influences. So, you know, Pink Floyd, The Who, mm. Rolling Stones, uh, the, um, um, Pink Floyd. Uh, did I say Pink Floyd? <laughs> Can't remember. Anyway, so, you know, all of those um, old influences, even stuff like um, uh, Motley Crue and stuff like you know, a bit of early metal. Yeah, yeah. And so, but I, I just don't listen to modern music anymore because I just, it doesn't... Doesn't do it for you. Doesn't. I just don't... Well, I, I don't know how to break into, like, alternative music that is, um, you know, just not of an age to understand what the kids are listening to because yeah. you don't get exposed to it. Yeah. And um, I've always been listening to... Uh, when I was young, it was always alternative music, never listened to pop music. And now I've got no, no way of knowing what's out there uh, because the only thing I get exposed to is pop music, and it is, it's a bit... Trashy, to be fair. So your love of music comes from those classics, mm. you know, the Who, the Pink Floyd, coming into it from what you listened to yeah. years ago. We've talked a little bit off camera about how you kind of gone to Mayfields, yeah. um, and you work with Dom and the team there. Mm -hmm. So you're around the corner. We're, we're filming here in Portsmouth. Talk to me a little about about them and their influence on your music, and, and if you enjoy working with them in your music writing process. Now Dom um, plays on uh, on some of my songs. He plays the piano on some of my songs. Um, I don't really do anything for my songwriting process because, I mean, I've, I've got, I'm quite a prolific songwriter, so I've got a lot of material, and um, the reason for recording it is because um, it just got to a point where all I was doing was writing songs, and I, I thought I'd never get a chance to be able to record them all, so I better start soon. <laughs> so they didn't, um, no, there's no influence in my songwriting or anything, but... Um, so you'll go with them, the song's there, they'll just come on and add those little bits and, and just yeah. bring that sound in. They'll put a bass line to it, you yeah. know, add a bit of piano, um, uh, write a guitar, um, you know, just play a lead over it, over the top. Do you give them clear instructions on their mixing and mastering, or do you, ju you just leave them to yeah. it, you do your thing there? I, d I wouldn't know where to start. We, sometimes we do, and we play around with stuff, so like... Um, <laughs> There's a song that's just pure harpsichord on my album, and uh, which is, we were just messing around. Um, so, uh, um, but but there's a guy called Matt Brook, and he um, he is just a musical genius, and uh, uh, the things he can do with uh, Pro Tools is amazing. Mm. So, uh, but uh, you know, um, when we come out of a recording session, um, I think I give him some inspiration to do some of my songs, inspire him to do some things that he wouldn't normally do. Yeah. And the other way around, you know, I think, um, uh, you know, th stuff, some of the stuff that he comes up with to add to my songs is just amazing. So he will, he will be there in the studio, you'll play it to him for the first time. Yeah. And he's just, he's thinking, right, this is what I'm going to add and this is going to mix and master. And you yeah. just... Well, no, we do, uh, we do, you know, uh, it's negotiation, you know, <laughs> as we go through it, you do, I think, no. I, do you enjoy I, that process of someone coming into your song? And just... Yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, um, so we're in the middle of um, recording a song at the moment, hmm. and um, I'm going to go back on Saturday and say that I'm going to take out a couple of these verses because, you know, these don't need to repeat them. I've repeated them, and, I and so, uh, so we'll go through that process, but it is a case of, you know, you start off recording bits, uh, then you, you you go over, over it again and over it again, tailor it until you, you're happy. That's it, basically. Talk, you've said that you're a prolific songwriter. Talk to me a little bit like that. Like when you've got a song, is it something you will just naturally get done and it's quickly? Do, do some songs take years to finish? How how does mix, that process a mix. go? So um, I um, I've got I don't know if I've got an unusual songwriting process, but um, it's normal for me. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, I'll be, I'll grab a guitar mm. um, first thing in the morning and it might be seven o'clock when I'm just waking up and it might be 7.30 until I'm sort of like, you know, fully awake. Yeah. And in that period of time, I'll be either thinking of something, well, I'll have the guitar in my hand <laughs> and I'll be thinking of something um, completely random, but my, my hand will just be moving over the, the fretboard and then I'll just be aware that I've just created this incredible riff and I've, oh, you know, and so I'll, 
I'll um, play around that. Yeah. And then find some other riffs that um, sit with it. Yeah. And then you you end up with a song quite quickly. Um, well, the hard bit is is getting the lyrics because, um, you know, like Ed Sheeran says things like, um, you know, he wrote this song because he just found out some news about this thing and, and you know affected him. Hmm. Absolutely nothing like that with me. Right. Um, I don't I don't put any of my personal self into any of my songs. Hmm. Um, I just try to write stories, but yeah. those stories come from um, simply. Um, you know, trying to fit a word into the into the melody, <laughs> any random word. If it f if it fits into that melody, it's uh, <laughs> and then I'll try to construct a story around that word. Yeah, or that phrase. It's amazing for me that you know you just write up in that flow state, and chords are just coming, and yeah. I'm guessing you just, right. Okay, we're sticking with that. Mm. That lyric process. How long can that take? What's the shortest it's taking? What's the longest it's taking? Uh, well, I did. A, I've got a, uh, a single out called Halloween, mm -hmm. which was released at Halloween. <laughs> <I'm doing that. laughs> And um, that was done, and that was, the whole thing was done in a day. Crazy. So, but that's only because I'd, I'd written this lovely um, tune, and and it was Halloween, and I said to my wife, "Listen to this," and she said, "Oh, that's lovely." She said, "Oh, it's Halloween today. Why don't you make a Halloween song?" And I thought, "Okay then." <laughs> so, and, and so with that inspiration, it was it it took like two hours to finish, but um, but trying to write a story that uh, you know comes in a song when you've got uh, the idea of a story you've got the phrase mm -hmm. and then you say what sort of story can i construct from that phrase and then um you can get you know a skeleton quite quickly but then um you know, edit it and edit it and edit it until you know it, it i've just like you know it's about um, standards mm -hmm. and um I, I couldn't possibly lead re release something unless i thought you know, it, that sounds, you know, the, the story's right. Yeah. And each word in it is correct. Would you call yourself a perfectionist in that way? Um, do you think you've got great songs that haven't been released that you are holding back on or you do put out in the world and go, I believe in this from... Because a lot uh, of musicians do struggle with that at times. Well, I've got ADHD. The problem is, is that um, uh, I can't do things not right, you know, right. and that's, that's one of the things that of my condition is yeah. that um, it has to be perfect. Yeah. So I'm not a perfectionist. I just have a condition that makes me... The standards are high. Yeah. And you want to get that and you want to meet that. And put that yeah. Out. So one of the things of ADHD is that you can concentrate on something for hours. You can get really bored of things really quickly. Mm. But when you're into something, you can concentrate on it for hours. And that's what I do. And that's it. And that's the songwriting. And that's where yeah. it all comes together. And so when, I, when I've got into this songwriting um, uh, phase, it's just ultimate focus. Mm. And, um, and that's the reason why, um, you know, I was just lucky that I was born with a condition that enables me to do what I do. And it's important now we're getting that out, getting it heard and, and, and yeah. putting it out. But I didn't know for a long time wh why I was the way I was. And I was mm. only um, diagnosed last year. Okay. And with that, um, it sort of explains a lot a bit about um, the reasons why I'd never done anything before. Mm. Because um, with that comes a lot of anxiety. And now, now I know it's a condition, not just me being, you know, like... Uh, not having in the guts to do it, then uh, you know, I forced myself to override that natural fear. Is there a little bit fear. of relief now, looking back on that from a year ago? Is there a bit of relief going, this is who I am? No, it's still scary. Okay. No, but, you know, uh, um, it's got to be done. I mean, I, I, I didn't want to get to a point where I'd be 90 years old and hadn't released anything and, you know, sitting on all this, you know, what I consider to be wonderful music mm. and, um, and to just for it to you know, disappear into into history without ever being heard by anybody. I think it's really important today that other musicians will listen to this and watch this and, and take that on and just yeah. kind of think of that perspective of, okay, I've got something here, I've got a gift, put that out in the world. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, um, the good thing about, um, uh, you know, being in, in gone through the, the, the journey I've gone through mm. is that you realise that um, if you've got talent, then you really you owe it to people to um, to put it out there. But um, by, by the same thing, there are a lot of people who think they've got talent and um, and it muddies the water for everybody else who does. Mm. So it shouldn't be for everybody to do. I think there should be like a panel of people that says, no, that's good enough here, you can do it. I'm but that's what Spotify do <laughs> anyway, isn't it? When you think about yeah. it, that's what Spotify do. They only actually really push music where the person coming through uh, has got a lot of streams. Yeah. 
And um, so it's, it's difficult for emerging uh, artists to get anywhere. 100%, and, and it's, it is a struggle. And they don't have that support and that yeah. team and know the direction. And it's important to really support musicians. But I think that's a really strong message you've given to people there. And hopefully people can take that on board and really take that away. Um, Stuart, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you so much for doing the songs. We really, really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. I was just thinking it was um, a real unusual experience, you know, to actually <laughs> be in a, in a TV studio and um, singing in front of um, all these wonderful students. <laughs> um, and they even clapped me once or twice <laughs> afterwards. So that was good. It was a, a, an amazing experience. I really appreciate that. Um, everyone's going to love watching and listening at home. So thank you for coming in, Stuart Lawrence. Thank you.